All right, hello everybody, Sand, your engineer, MBA, and investor. And in today's video, I wanna talk about the title of this video, a new era for the CRISPR generation, a new era for all individuals in the CRISPR landscape. Uh, and the reason why I wanna make this video is not necessarily because of what just happened recently at the UK, but I wanna remind viewers that this is much bigger than just an approval, a CRISPR approval. It's much bigger than just, you know, potentially making billions of dollars for a company like CRISPR Therapeutics. It goes all the way down to patients level. And there's this video here posted by uh, Gene Investing here at x.com. Uh, and and I thought to myself, you know what, let's make a video on this because I think it's going to remind viewers how important it is when it comes to dosing patients that, you know, the median age of sickle cell disease in UK alone is 40, but atelsemia is like 50. That's the median age of lifespan. That means by the median age, to me, basically by the age of 40, you're pretty much dead if you have sickle cell disease in the UK alone. And UK is a first world country, right? So think about, you know, maybe other regions where they don't even have, you know, transfusions and so on, right? So I wanna take a look at this video. And of course this video uh, involves uh, ARK Invest, Kathy Woods and Ali Yerman. And they're basically replaying a video from the first sickle cell disease patient cured by CRISPR therapeutics and Vertex, which was Victoria Gray. At us at ARC, we always talk about the convergences between and among technologies. These are technologies within the multi-omic space that are going to be revolutionary because they save patients' lives. And so we'll just play a quick clip of one of the first patients ever treated with Exocel uh, to hear her experience on it because I think no one can do it better than her. Good afternoon. I do not have any ties um, to get paid financially to be at this meeting. My name is Victoria Gray. I'm a 38-year-old mother and wife. Um, I'm the first sickle cell patient to be treated with CRISPR gene therapy. Before this treatment, my entire childhood and most of my adult life was plagued with severe pain, fatigue, numerous hospital stays, and the fear of dying. The pain would come on so suddenly, it felt like I was being hit by a truck and struck by lightning at the same time. In order to manage my pain, I had to take three different opioids, oxycodone, dilaudid, and fentanyl. Even with this combination, I was still in a lot of pain. I received regular blood transfusions in hopes to increase my blood counts and improve my symptoms of pain and fatigue, but it was only a temporary solution. One hospital stay in particular has been permanently imprinted into my mind. It was in October 2010 that I had one of the worst sickle cell crisis of my life. It ended my college pursuit of being a nurse. With this crisis, I was awake for three days straight. I couldn't use my legs or my arms. I was in so much pain that I couldn't even lift my hips enough to sit on a bedpan. I couldn't lift a fork to feed myself or use my hands to wash my face. I depended on a physical therapy team to help me regain the control of my body. This was all a result of a severe pain episode from sickle cell disease. I didn't get released from this hospital stay until January 2011. I missed Thanksgiving, Christmas, and all four of my children's birthdays. I became so weak from being beat down by this disease, I had to have someone come into my home to help me with my normal day-to-day -day routines. It wasn't until my son's teacher called me to say that his behavior had changed, <clears throat> excuse me, because he thought that I was going to die. I knew I had to fight for my kids. When I met Dr. Frangle in Nashville, he presented the opportunity for me to join gene therapy trial. I said yes without hesitation, knowing that I would be the first person. But this was my opportunity to fight. After receiving this treatment, I no longer have pain, so I no longer have to take opioids. I no longer have hospital stays or receive blood transfusions. I get to participate with my kids and join them in their activities when they play sports, cheer them on at their dance events, and just be here and just to play with them and knowing that 
I no longer have to leave them to go to the hospital. I now work full time and I contribute to my my household and my community. I believe if you say yes to this treatment, that it's going to change the lives positively of many people who are suffering from diseases and disorders who now feel hopeless. But once it's come, they can feel hope again, just like I did. Thank you. So I think that was just a taste. There were, you can access the link online. I, I think we'll be able to provide that for everyone. And, you know, I highly encourage anyone who's interested to listen to the stories of all the, the brave people who have tried um, and been on these trials for sickle cell and other gene therapy and gene editing therapies. And um, we look forward to hearing what happens at their PADUFA date, which is the date in which the FDA will say whether they can commercialize the therapy or not. Uh, it's December 8th for sickle cell disease. And then it's March 30th uh, for beta thalassemia. And as we always say, innovation solves problems. Innovation uh, will transform the world and make it a better place. And, you know, it's been such an interesting journey during this interest rate increase, all the fear, investors running back to their benchmarks, selling innovation, selling long-duration assets, not believing that cures actually uh, were uh, upon us. Uh, even though Victoria Gray had gone through this trial, I think she's nearly at the end of her third year, and we had been watching it. Uh, no safety issues. Um, cured. That just wasn't a concept before now for sickle cell disease and beta thalassemia. Uh, so as Victoria said, great hope. And uh, we believe that this moment is much like the moment we experienced uh, when the biotech movement started with Genentech. And that created one of the greatest investment opportunities in the life sciences slash healthcare space of our lives. And this, we believe, is bigger. In that said, I think uh, Kathy Wood's a little bit emotional here. Uh, you can sort of see the teary eyes. And, and qu quite honestly, I was a little bit emotional too when I was watching uh, Victoria Gray speak there. I mean, OPOs couldn't even, you know, do the basic task on her own without, you know, physical assistance by someone else. And I mean, these are things that people have to remind themselves. Uh, this is quite, you know, not just expensive, but brutal. Right. These these experiences uh, with sickle cell disease or beta thalassemia or even any blood disorder or just any rare disease. I mean, you don't have any you know cure for it. I mean, governments are spending money when you know on things that maybe aren't really helping the situation. Rather, just like you're like patching, putting a bandage on you know on a leaking tank. Uh, and that's why the median age of lifespan is 40 years for sickle cell disease, right? And, you know, the story of, of Victoria Gray uh, testifying here in front of the uh, FDA's committee there. Again, this was not, this was well before the news in the UK. This was, of course, the external committee there that gave the green light to the FDA for CRISPR therapeutics and Vertex program at the end of October, 31st October, and we made a video on it, but... You know, to see this test of testament and testimony rather, and to see this experience from the first ever patient cured, it's just amazing, guys. Um, and we've come a long way, right? This is a new era for CRISPR because we're moving now from something that was really just for, you know, the lab or preclinical trials, clinical trials on specific humans and specific patients to now something that can go commercial in the UK and Again, it's just the UK, but it's not just the UK. UK is no, it's nothing to sneeze at. I mean, it's one of the powerful countries in the world. I mean, you take a look at US, Canada, UK, Europe, Australia, New Zealand. I mean, that's pretty much it when it comes to first developed nations, you know, the Commonwealth countries and uh, sharing, you know, knowledge between, you know, health regulatory bodies. So if the UK approves it, then and the FDA got the green light from the extra community, then you can sort of take the next guess that, you know, come December 8th, the FDA is going to give the green light to this program in the U.S., which is just going to throw a whole momentum, right, that we've never seen. So I really think it's special, guys. I think this is something that we've been talking about for many, many years. I mean, there are people on this channel that have been waiting for this moment, and we finally have it. We have the moment where the UK is now going to go ahead and allow CRISPR therapeutics and Vertex to those patients and basically sell their program, their therapy. And, you know, I'll make another whole nother video about the price and what I think about it. But I just want to stick with the purpose of this video. I mean, this is just a new era, guys. 
just don't forget this is all about the patience and stories like this from Victoria Gray, it's quite not just emotional, but you sort of are reminded the human element. And then you're sort of reminded as to what is the potential of CRISPR when it comes to rare diseases, when it comes to diseases, period. Forget about rare disease, just diseases. Think about extending lifespan because that's what you're doing, right? You're moving now from 40 years median age to a lot longer, right? If you can eradicate sickle cell disease from the body, cure them, then you're moving from 40 to what? 60, 70, 80? That's extending lifespan. So like Kathy Wood said, I mean, this is one of the generational investments right now in this space. I mean, we don't give financial advice, guys, but man, it's, it, it's, it's hard for, for anybody to argue against CRISPR at this point. And I really, really hope people see this uh, going forward. So hope you guys appreciate this video, guys. I wanted to make this video. I'm still, I'm still traveling. So that's why I'm sort of uh, no webcam and the microphone sort of uh, not really speaking that loud because there's obviously I'm in an Airbnb and I don't want to disturb people here, but hopefully you guys appreciate this video. This this means a lot to me and I know it means a lot to a lot of people to see these types of videos uh, and to see what's been happening in the CRISPR landscape. A lot of people that left this space in the last two years are coming back to this space. I mean, just our last video got over 300 views in less than 48 hours. Uh, that's just breaking records. So there's a lot of momentum. So. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much, guys. As always, subscribe if you're not. Like this video if you have value. And let me know in the comments, guys. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Is this the new era for CRISPR? What do you guys think? Thank you.